Okay, I, I'm going to speak now. Um, it, I was in a, in a venue at the youth venue, which was prayer and worship, and the last night, I, uh, we, we were praying for the nation, and, and some of the issue, there was racism raised, raised in, the, in, the, in this, you know, some of the issues that were going on within, within our country. Um, there was one lad, um, during that meeting actually, one lad came up to me, a teenager, and said, can you pray with me? I'm, I'm constantly getting texts from people at my school wanting me to be running drugs for them. And, uh, and everything. So I had that. He'd spoken to his parents and the police, but he was still, he's just constantly getting these texts. And I thought, wow, that, goodness me, that's, you know, and he's a really nice lad. Um, wanted nothing to do with it, but somehow he, he was, I, I don't know what the full story was. There was another lad got up and said, My mum's just phoned me right now, there's people rioting outside our house. Um, and, and it, and you think, well, what you know, what's happening? Obviously, it's been it's been great seeing some of the anti-riot stuff, you know, and how it's calmed things down. Where you see the majority of people don't want this, and this just being a presence has sort of calmed things down, which has been brilliant. And some of the cleanup operations. Um, but I want I want to speak into the, this this morning about what is our Christian response or what is a christian response there's more than one christian response to all of this so how how should we hold ourselves and behave in this this situation um and i'm aware um that what i say you might think is simplistic um i am aware that there are deep-seated issues um, you know, and whether that's to do with, you know, to do with freedom of speech or perceived inequalities in how um, police deal with things, immigration issues, all sorts of things. Um, there, there's a, it, it's not straightforward, okay? And there's, there's a fear that if you, know, you speak up or act that you're branded as being phobic of, of any sort or that there'll be a backlash or all these type of things. So th there's, a, there's a real cauldron of stuff happening within our country at the minute. So how do we respond as Christians? So I'm aware of those issues. Um, what I'm going to say is actually quite simple. And my first thought was, well... I, the obvious thing is, what do I do? And my first thought was to pray. This prayer has got to be the first thing. But as I've been looking at how we pray into these situations, there's more than what we have to do than pray. And the other thing that I want to mention this morning is to examine our own hearts in the midst of this whole situation with our country. In order to be able to pray, we have to examine our own hearts. That's my simplistic message, okay? But I believe it is at the heart of what, is, um, what we need to do, and it provides a platform for anything else that we, we do, or anything we do or say in this situation. So when I thought about prayer, I thought about Jesus coming into the temple and saying, that, you know, my father's house should be a house of prayer. But I hadn't really read the passage properly, so I'm going to read the passage to you. And um, it goes like this. Mark 11, verse 15. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. So there's Jesus, not gen Jesus, gen um, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Meek, yes, he was, but he wasn't gentle and mild. He, he absolutely sort of went to town in that situation. Um, 
And I went, well, what does it mean by that? My house is a house of prayer for all nations. Does that mean that they should be praying for all nations? And I went back to the passage that Jesus was quoting from, and it means something different to that. It means something very different. And it goes in Isaiah 56, verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this, the person who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it and keeps their hands from doing evil. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I'm only a dry tree, for this is what the Lord says, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, um, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Right, actually, right from the beginning of the Bible. See, the Jews thought that salvation was just for them. That only they were the people of God and only they could draw near to, to God. And you see, actually, all the way through the Bible, this is a problem. And you see it in the New Testament, it's a problem. And right from the beginning, God has got a heart for people from every nation on the planet. There is nobody excluded from coming to worship God. Nobody is excluded. And, uh, and even in the temple that was set up, there was, a, there was an area set up for the Gentiles, the people that weren't Jews, so that they could bring their offerings and offer their sacrifices. They were discriminated against in terms of there were walls and it was their special court, as were the women had, who had their own special court, and it was only the men that could go you know, further in, into the sort of more holy places. Um, but where... Jesus went in and turned over all the money changers' um, tables was the Gentile courts, the places that were set apart from people from other nations to worship God. The Jews didn't care about the Gentiles. They thought they were better than the Gentiles. So it didn't matter. Like the religious people knew it was all happening. They didn't do anything about it. All the leaders, they knew about it. That in the Gentile courts, it was just a marketplace. It was an absolute hubbub. How could the Gentile people, people who weren't Jews, worship God? Where it was just like a marketplace. And also, there's all that corruption going on. That was what set Jesus off. Why it was such a betrayal of God's heart and God's plan, which is for every, people from every tongue tribe, nation, which means, because ethnic group is one of those words, means eth every single ethnic group. Why was Jesus angry? In Ephesians 2, it says that Jesus died to break down the dividing walls. Ephesians 2 verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, it's talking about Gentiles, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. That is God's heart and God's plan. His, he has an equal love from people from every tongue, tribe and nation and ethnic group. 
Jesus was angry because what was meant to be a holy place to draw near to God and pray had been turned into a noisy marketplace. And it had been sanctioned by the religious leaders. What was meant to be a holy place had turned into an unholy place with extortion and over, you know, selling you know, duff animals and uh, overpricing and all that sort of thing was going on in that supposedly holy place. What should have been a holy place welcoming people who weren't Jews to worship and prayer was an absolute mess, making it virtually impossible for them to worship God in that place. And yet God's heart and God's plan and what God will, will be the case in Revelation chapter 7, it says, Verse 9, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. People from every tongue, tribe, nation. Which is, and one of the common which word is, is ethnic group and language. Racism was an issue then. Racism is a, a big problem in this country and in many of our hearts within this country. And what we face in our society may be complicated and long-term dialogue almost certainly needs to happen to try and work out some of the issues that, that are clearly um, around in our country. However, without a shadow of a doubt, there's a deep down issue that is clearly coming out and you know whether some people are trying to stir it for others there's an opportunity and something's rising up and it's coming out this racist attitude and and i want to talk about it okay because uh, we're not immune to it within the church we're not immune to being racist within the church and i i, I want to talk about that a little bit um I'm not going to go into great depth but, um, but racism is when a person is treated worse, excluded, disadvantaged, harassed, bullied, humiliated, or degraded because of their race or ethnicity. Or is another thing which is quite good, is racism is the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as being either inferior or superior to one another. And I think it's this, this idea that, you know, my race, my or culture is better than somebody else's and treat them that way. And um, just out of interest, I suspect virtually all of us at one point or other have been treated unfairly because of our, um, our, our, our background. It, you, and it, and it's, just out of interest, who, who has been? I've, I've been treated differently because of my color, or my, or my who, who else has done that, been, been treated? I, I've, I've heard loads of, loads of people. I, I would say, I'd be surprised if most people haven't. Um, my wife does. She gets that quite a lot. She gets the mic taken out of her accent, you know, and uh, and and actually, at times that can be wearing, you know, just because it's different because she got a different, speaks a different language. Usually, it's when you're in the minority that you get treated differently for it, and um, you know. I, I want to talk about, just mention, in the last two weeks, three incidences of racist, racism or racist conversations that I've, I've come across. Okay, this is, this is in the, within the last um, three, two weeks. 
So when we came back from holiday, um, five of our six bags didn't turn up. <laughs> so the next day, the guy with the van came to deliver them. And, he, and he, he came and said to me, he gave them, he said, oh, you know, I, I deliver in bags all the time. I can't stand it with these people that can't speak English and they, 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 uh, they, you know, they, they've, they've come here pretending to have nothing and they're, they're sending all these bags over. Um, and, it, and it was just like, he just came out with it to me. There, I was just getting my bags off him. And, I, and there was racism based around colour, language, immigration... It was based all around that. The man at the bowls club, after the Southport incident, he basically said, "Well, you know, you know, Congo, Nigeria, or wherever it was, it's all the same. Um, you know, just get a gun and, you know." So, you know, and, 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 and he literally said that. He said, that's what he, he deserves. That's the way to deal with it. And then I, I came across some, a post on Facebook and I had to speak about it. This was a, and this one was a Christian. And a Christian had posted a picture with obviously supposedly Muslim people holding knives with a baby with a Union Jack on its T-shirt. They were chasing the baby, and there was the um, Big Ben in the background. And I, I could not believe what I, I'd seen there. I, I, phoned, I phoned them, and, and I spoke to them, and I asked them to take it down. I think I did them a favour, actually. I mean, they gave the, their, their reasoning was based around, well, Islam, Muslims taking over our country. Okay. Um, but it, they said they would listen to me. They would hear what I said, and they did take it down immediately. They might be thanking me, for all I know, because it, <laughs> cause that's probably illegal. That's as far as it being by inciting hatred. That is actually, um, but those are three things, and and I and I honour that that person for taking it down because they, they listened and were willing to discuss it. But those are three extreme cases of racism that I've just been conversations that I've had this this week is is a massive issue, and just even from that last one, it shows you it's not just people that aren't Christians, it's within the church as well, racist attitudes. Now, can I just sort of talk about one of the reasons why we have racist attitudes within us? We're all brought up in societies which have views about other types of people. Every society that I've ever lived in or been part of likes another country to be the butt of their jokes. So like when we were in Cambodian, if, if a child was crying in the nursery, Cambodian child was crying, the comment was, oh, it must be Vietnamese. <laughs> <'Cause>, you know, <laughs> so, it, you know, it's, it's like us making Irish jokes or, or whatever. You know, sometimes it's lighthearted, but there's actually within it a deep-seated comparison of races. Um, We all base our ethnic identity to some level in comparison with other groups. Oh, we don't do this in our, in our culture. Or we do this in our culture, they don't do that in their culture. And straight away there's this, you know, and now there will be elements of different cultures that we like and dislike or that we feel comfortable with or don't feel comfortable with. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? There's, that, that's, gonna, that's, that, that's the world we live in. And that's why often we congregate within our own ethnic groups, because we feel comfortable and we understand what, when we speak, we understand each other. <laughs> you know, when, um, when my wife gets together with Scottish people, it's like suddenly she's, she's free just to, to, to speak like, 
just as normal, but she feels comfortable with that. Um, and it, it goes the same with all of our ethnic groups and stuff, you know, whether it's Gypsy or Filipino or, or Indian or, or whatever, you know, we, we, we do feel more comfortable with those. So, you know, and, the, and there's nothing wrong with that. But deep down, it's very easy to start getting racist thoughts and saying, oh, I don't like those Pakistanis. Heard that a lot. Anybody else heard a lot of that? Apart from they didn't, wouldn't have used that word Pakistani. I've heard it a lot. I'd, I don't ever remember hearing anyone admitting that they are racist. I've never heard anybody admit it. I've heard people justifying why they're, they're able to make comments about people of other nationalities in the way that they do, but I've never heard anyone say I'm racist. And uh, their opinions are justified, or our opinions are justified. I'm not going to say a lot more about this, but that is a spirit that is going around. I just want to mention, just at this point, about free speech. You know we've got free speech in our country. Christians don't really have free speech, okay? And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Yes, we do have free speech within the laws of this country. But the Bible says all things are permissible, but not everything is beneficial. We are called to answer to God for every idle word that we say. And that is the reality. And we have a choice about what we say and what we do. And this includes social media, because social media is where people feel free to express themselves more bluntly and, and, and straightforwardly, because there's no accountability. For, um, but we're accountable for what we post on Facebook and social media. Um, in all of this, Christians must have an opposite spirit. We have to approach this with a different spirit to the spirit of the world. And that is a key thing. And what I'm asking you today is before, prayer is important, but we need to examine our own hearts. Is what I say and what I do, is it helpful? Is it glorifying to Jesus? Is within my heart there any racism? How about letting God show us our hearts? The Bible says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Are you glad you came to church today? <laughs> but actually, being where I said, Lord, would you, would you search my heart? Do I have racist attitudes? Do I have attitudes which lead me to say things that are not helpful to, and to the, the, you know, the people around me and are not glorifying to you? Do I have those within me, Lord? Lord, search my heart. And I, do you know, God could easily... Do you know what's, what's really good? If you ask God to search your heart, he brings up specifics. <laughs> you say, you know that little post you put there? Tell me about that. <laughs> You know that word that you, you were in that conversation with X over there and you were talking about um, this particular issue? And you know you said that? That's how God works. And as he highlights those things, you say, oh God, I realize that is bad and it comes from my heart. Because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And... If you want your prayers answered, it says, Psalm 66, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. 
but God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. So it's search my heart, Lord. See if there's any wicked way in there. See it. And in all of this, because it's so heightened and there's so much coming in at you from different angles. Lord, calm down. Just, I want to slow down. Search my heart. See if there's any wicked way within me, Lord. Then you're able to pray. Then you're able to pray into the situation. And you'll pray into that situation with the heart of God more than your preconceived ideas that perhaps were, you know, and I'm talking to myself as well, you know, more than uh, my existing preconceived ideas. What's the heart of God in this situation? So moving on from that, we've got our heart right. We've confessed uh, uh, any racism, any sort of sins in our heart to God and said, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I'm willing to let go. My ethnicity, my nationality is not better than anybody else's. Are you okay with that? <laughs> That's a tough one to say. Because when you live abroad, what you do is you focus on the things, the, one of the, the, the last things you've got to hold on to is your, um, your culture and your ethnicity. And you say, oh, this is so good about my culture. Oh, they don't do it like that here. Well, I went to Cambodia to reach a nation for Jesus. Uh, and after four, four or five months, I, was, I hated them. Didn't like their culture. Didn't like, you know. And it was because I was going through culture shock, actually, de dealing with that. But then God has to deal with your heart. You know, and... Uh, um, so how do we pray? Two passages I'm going to read, and I'm not going to say a lot about them. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Okay, so that's a, a start, isn't it? Different types of prayers, by the way. Asking, standing in the gap, thanking God. Um, there's all sorts of ways of praying, which you guys learned about some different ways of praying, didn't you, in the, uh, in the festival, being creative in, in that as well. But that intercession, calling out to God, waiting on God, hearing his voice, all of these things. Um, there's, it's good. We have a prayer meeting on Tuesday and, and on the Friday. Join it. People, come along. You, we've got to pray. We really do need to pray. But pray made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Well, how important is that? But lead better lead peaceful lives and be able to live our, our lives for God. And we're praying for those in authority. That's important. So that we want this all calm down so that we can lead peaceful and God, godly lives. Um, this is good and pleases God our Saviour. So praying, praying for all people, praying for those in authority. Um, even if you've lost faith in the government or the police, we're still called to pray for them. And not let that be the dominating thought, I've lost faith in them. Our faith is in God. And God can enable them to make wise decisions that bring about and allow us to lead peaceful and godly lives. Um, this is good and pleases God our Saviour who wants all people to be saved. It's about people getting saved. It's about the gospel. Part of that prayer is freedom to preach the gospel. But even if we don't have freedom to preach the gospel, we preach the gospel. You know, it, it, we had people from Open Doors at, at the... At the, were you there? And I think I spoke at the main meeting, a Mexican Christian who's uh, been persecuted because of um, the, the faith. And even if we've got permission to preach the gospel, we still preach the gospel because that's our only reason for existence uh, here. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God... This is not PC. One mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. So that's our prayer, and the aim of it is that we, we can be able to get on and preach the gospel. Um, 
I'm just the final passage in Ephesians 3, and I've been challenged by this. Um, For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Amazing that, isn't it? God is God over all the earth. Every family in heaven and on earth derives its name from God. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, and again, that's a, got to be the hallmark, isn't it? Right through the New Testament, love. May have power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. How about the love of God for Muslim people, communities across our country? Does he love those Muslim communities? Surely not. I, I hate them. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what, what I hate, but I'm just saying I'm expressing somebody else's point of view. Can't stand them. Get rid of them. God loves every single Muslim in this country and across the world. How deep, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do it, and this is the bit that I was being um, challenged, well not challenged by, but um, inspired by. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. So can you think about what you could ask or imagine? What, and before you pray, just say, well, what is it? What, 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 what can I imagine? happening in my situation or in this country what can I imagine and it's amazing you start to imagine you say wow I want want to see just loads of people becoming Christians I want to see um, people's lives just being turned around what was it you want to see and start imagine a picture in your mind And then it says, God's able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than all you can ask or imagine. According to the power that's at work within us. Isn't that a great way to pray? To imagine what you'd like and then to realize that. So... One of the, my understanding of that, actually, I was talking to this about somebody. If I had a ball, like a tennis ball, and threw it, would I better hit the far wall? Do you think I would better hit the far wall? Any other, any other women? No. 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 If, if, I, if I was going to throw it, a ball that way, I'd definitely better hit the wall there, wouldn't I? Well within my capacity. We're not, we can't ask anything that is outside of God's capacity that he can well able to, to do. He's well able. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. And that is the God who we're praying to. So when we pray, we want to pray big things because God can do exceedingly abundantly of all we think or imagine and even within our own lives when we just think oh, I despair of my own life so it's according to the power his power that is at work within us you know God is transforming us from one degree of glory to the next so how do we apply it one ask God to search our hearts two we can pray three After that, I think we can actually ask God, if you want us to bridge some divides, there might be some divides, be peacemakers. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So, when we think about what am I saying, is that stirring up division or is it being a peacemaker? 
But can I reach out to somebody across a divide somewhere? Actually, that is a witness in itself. And amazing, as we get to know people, we, d- we discover that we've got a lot, a lot of things in common. And, and the third thing, fourth thing, is that we preach the gospel. So search our hearts, pray, be peacemakers, preach the gospel. Told you it was simplistic. Shall we just pray a minute? And then I, I'd like us, we're going to break bread together. And I'd like us to do it um, a little differently this morning. But Jesus, I pray that you'll take this word. Lord, we want to have pure hearts. Would you search our hearts, Lord? Lord, we want to have clean hearts before you. Would you make us into people that are going to honor you? And we, we pray, Father, that if there's any wicked way within us, Lord, we want to bring it to you. And Lord, we want to be people that speak your, your truth and your love and are, are peacemakers in the, the, the whole situation in this country that will be part of actually helping to see peace come and people fear dissipate. That we won't stir, but that we'll speak truth, truth and that we'll, we will also challenge racism by having the opposite of spirit, Lord, I pray. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Lord, we pray. Would you use all what has been happening for your good and for your glory? We pray for a mighty turning to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What I'd like to do is um, this morning is to get a, a number of people from different nationalities and ethnic groups and languages even, just come in and praying praying for us as a church, praying for us as a nation. Um, and I'd like them also to hand out our, our communion when we have communion together. And it's just like as a, as a statement, we actually believe there is only one true people, that God has broken down the dividing walls of hostility and he's made one true people. We want to demonstrate that in a, in a way this morning. So... Um, Pastor T. Joe can come as well. Um, the lad, what's, I can't remember your name from um, Sri Lanka. Would you come to the front as well? Would you be willing to pray for us? Eh? Not today. Okay, that's fine. You can pray in your own language. Would you like to pray in your own language? Okay, right, fine. Anyway, so you come as well. Um, can we have someone, a Romani, a Romani gypsy would be good to come and pray? Yeah. Eric? Eric, do you want to come? Yeah. Come on, Eric. Could have been any, anybody else. Could we have a Filipino? We, we, we need some ladies, actually, don't we? We could do with, it with, a, do with a lady. Go on, go for somebody. Somebody brave, somebody brave, go on. Right, well, the, what, part of the Filipino culture is to try and get someone else to do it, okay? They'll, they'll sort themselves out, okay, right, in the midst of this. Um, what other, could we, have we got any Scottish, per, a Scottish person would be good, I think. Right, thank you. Um, we, could we have a Nigerian um, lady, please? One of the Nigerian ladies? And any other, have anybody else like to pray as part of this? Right. What we're going to do is going to start from that side, just move across, and you can pray either in English or in your own language. We we'll love it in your own language. Um, and... I'd like you to pray for us as a church. I'd like you to pray for Blackpool, and I'd like you to pray for the country. Okay, so whatever you comes out, okay, there's no right and wrong in this, okay. But can you guys join in and say, Lord, we want you to move. We've got a South African here as well. Well done, Mary Ann. Thank you. Come and stand here, Mary Ann, as a South African. Please. <laughs> We'd love you to. Brilliant. Thank you. 
Right, okay, so just move towards the middle a little bit, okay, as well. Um, and let's pray, sure. Let's all of us pray. And, and we say we want God to move. Okay, pray whatever language you want to pray in, guys. Lord, we just come to you this morning and we thank you for this diverse church that we've got here, for all different people. Thank you that we can, we can live together in harmony. I just pray that we'll be able to find find love for each other, Lord, in this country, and that we'll be able to come together in unity, and that as the church we'll be able to reach out to to people that we don't know, other people of other other nations, Lord. And I just thank you, God, that you love us all so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, that you have brought us in this country because you have a greater plan for us. We are foreigners and we are immigrants. But we, we believe, Lord God, you have purpose for bringing us in this country, not just for our financial sake, but also for your glory. And thank you for this church, Lord God, that will come to us uh, as a family, as one member. And reminded me a song when I was a child that Jesus loves all the children in the world. Yellow, black, and red, you loved us, O oh Lord God. And Lord, I pray for this nation, um, that Lord, the peace, uh, that you filled us with peace, O oh Father, Lord God, that you fill us with love, O oh Lord God. Lord, we praise you, Lord Jesus, that you have in our heart, in you have, you have, it, we have you in our life, O oh Lord God, that you open us, you open us, Lord God, this part of anxiety that we are feeling at this moment of time. But Lord God, you have given us that presence of yours, Lord, that you are with us. You, you will never forgive, leave us or forsake us, O oh Lord God. That Lord, we claim your name that you are our God who knows what's inside in our heart, in our mind, and also the, our emotions of oh Father Lord Jesus, that Lord, we will not be persuaded politically, oh Lord God, that we will not be persuaded of what's happening at the moment, but with Lord God, that instead of persuading politically, we're going to uh, let them know that your love, oh Lord Jesus, for each and every one. And Lord, thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for this church, that we will be the one to show the world that you, that you have created us all the same, despite of our colors, despite of our languages, so Father, Lord God, there's no differences in your eyes because you love us so much. You have died on the cross for us, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord God, amen. Thank you, our dear Heavenly Father, we pray for whatever circumstances which is happening in this country. Lord, we stand united and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. As we pray together, all unrest, all which is causing troubles, we rebuke all those spirit. Let them all be out of this country. Let the heavenly peace reign in this nation. We pray, we pray and break all the yokes of devil, all the works of evil. And we pray for you, your great movement, your great revivals, which is going to happen and hit again in this nation. And we pray for souls of every, every person who is going to come in this nation. When they come and arrive in this nation, when they are in these nations, let their, them all be in the anointing of God. Let the anointing touch them. We pray for this wonderful congregation. Lord, I pray for this wonderful congregation and bless uh, each and every works and let your mighty power be manifested again in, in, in great multitude. And I pray for Pastor Neville, and I uh, bless him and his family, and every family in this church, and every heavenly family, as we heard to today's word of God, which is named by the Heavenly Father. Let all those families be richly blessed. And 
so profitable for the works of the kingdom of god to gain souls to do your great works that all of them be so mightily used by the spirit of god we thank you for this wonderful time lord we go give all in in your will that your will be reign uh, and let your great power be manifested in this nation so mightily again we thank you jesus in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ we pray amen heavenly father we give you thanks because you are faithful you are the great i am the king of kings and the lord of lords thank you lord for your church thank you for your word that has come forth thank you abba father for it it's not a mistake oh lord that you brought us all together from different backgrounds from different ethnic groups you brought us together as one your church everlasting father king of glory that same love that you took christ to the cross of calvary that died for us that paid the price for our sin that brought us together as one father we pray that that love be multiplied amongst us in the mighty name of jesus let the love of god be shared abroad in our heart father king of glory we pray for this church we pray for the pastor we pray for every member of this church those present and those watching online father king of glory we pray that your hand the lord will be mightily upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of jesus we pray king of glory that the love that you've you've shown us that the love that has compelled us so oh lord to become your sons and your daughters that same love oh lord will be spread even in this town even in this community blackpool as a town let also god so shine like the light that you say that we are that wherever we are in the school in the church outside in our workplace father that will be the will be the light oh god that you have made us to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father king of glory we pray for this nation everlasting king of glory nothing happens oh god as a mistake nothing happens without you knowing about it father you know that this time will come you know oh god the riots that they will happen but father king of glory because you say that we are like light that has been lighted and put upon a, a mountain that cannot be hidden father let that light shine in the midst of darkness father will come against every power of satan over this nation we break the hold of the enemy over this nation father we pray that as light of your word we will shine in every place that we are found and that souls of god will be brought to your kingdom in the mighty name of jesus thank you everlasting father because you are answered our prayer we give you all the praise in jesus name we have prayed amen thank you my heavenly father because in christ jesus there is no jew nor gentile there is no slave or free no greek or barbarian my lord we are all one in you and we've been brought together my father by the blood of Jesus on the cross, forgiving us of our sins. Thank you for the word that Pastor brought this morning, my Father, to examine ourselves before you, my Lord, to make sure that we are in the way and that we remain in the way. Father, racism, it seems, is a, is a branch, my Father, of a tree. And the root of that tree is sin. And my Lord, you, by your almighty salvation and the grace that you've poured out upon all men, my dealt with that you've broken the law of sin my father and you've allowed us my father to live by another law a higher law the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus the same Lord Jesus Christ that dwells in each of our hearts by faith and I praise you my father this morning for the great victory that you have accomplished on the cross it's a victory my father that stretches out into the whole world into your body my father that you have gathered amongst all peoples, amongst all nations. Father, I praise you this morning, in Jesus' name. Lord God, we love you today, we trust you. We thank you that you are on the throne, you are in control, you are working all things together for our good. 
And Lord, we know that even though we don't see it, you are working behind the scenes. We give you praise today. And Lord, we we thank you that we, you chose us before we could choose you. You said you knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. Lord, you know that what's going in this country and around the world, like we are all in one you. Uh, oh, we are all one in you. And Lord, uh, you never you never judge us in our outside. Uh, you uh, you examine our heart. We ask, even though we, sometimes we used to criticize people, but uh, we ask for forgiveness for everything, every bad intention. We ask you to weed out. We ask to weed out those that that intentions, motives in our heart, and replace a good heart in us, and help everyone to understand that uh, this is not. We have to. Uh, we, uh, this is something we have to uh, earn together. We have to go to kingdom together, not not dividing, not discriminating people. You help us to understand, and we ask you to make us and mold us into who you want us to be, and help us to make decisions that honor you. We put your first place in our lives. We recognize who you are, the sovereign God, the God who reigns, the God who created this universe. You are Jehovah Jaro, who provides our needs. You are Jesus, Lord. We thank you that even now you are going before us and making the crooked places straight. And we ask, uh, we ask uh, you to without every, without those that shouldn't be there. You said no weapon for, formed against us uh, will prosper. You ask, you like you say you can uh, do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. We ask you to uh, help help everyone to understand that uh, we should treat people with uh, good heart with the same heart and uh, like uh, we should respect the, the way we want to be respected because we know that we will be treated the way we treat others. So we thank you that you are in control of everything, that we believe that you this, this situation will going to be okay, fine, in the name of Jesus. We pray, amen. amen. Father God, I give you thanks that regardless of country of our birth, the colour of our skin, or our accent, we can all come together as part of your family in this church today. Lord, I pray that you bring love into everyone's heart, Lord, that they can see what they're doing in their communities, and bring them knowledge, Lord, and let them know that we all need to live together regardless. Lord, I'm reminded today that it's your will that will be done in this earth, not ours. So bring your will upon this earth and bring peace and harmony to it. I thank you in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And my prayer is that as we go out honouring Jesus and trusting in him, that he's the, the Lord and the Saviour and he's all-powerful. And there's nothing that you will face this week that is anywhere close to beyond what God can give you the strength to deal with or to over overcome in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm.